Hey, this is George from Smartima Graphics. In this tutorial, we'll create an electric neon effect as you can see on your screen right now. Without further talking, let's jump to the tutorial. Let's create a new composition. I like to name the main comp render. Click OK. Let's create some text. Let's grab the type tool and type anything you like. So distortion in my case. And of course, you can go ahead and align the text as you see fit. Now let's create a new solid. We'll be using Saber plugin. And if you don't have the Saber plugin, I'll leave a link in the description. You can download it for free. That's one of the best free plugins I would recommend you to have. So add the Saber plugin to the Saber solid layer and go to customize core and set the core type to text layer. And here for the text layer, select any desired layer. So distortion in my case. And as you can see that Saber was applied to our text layer paths. So here you can select diff many different presets. So uh, one I like this Arc Reactor or Energize. You can of course change the color. Set it for any desired one. This is a very customizable effect. You can play around with it for hours and adjust it how you like it. So yeah, we'll be changing and offset to 50%. Now let's animate our paths. So go to the beginning of your timeline, create keyframe for mask evolution. Go to the end of your timeline, set the cycles to three. Let's now duplicate the Saber layer by pressing Ctrl D. Let's go to presets and select different one that looks different. So Patronus here. And let's press U to reveal the keyframes. And for the first start keyframe of mask evolution, set the angle to 180 degrees. So then go to the end keyframe and also set it to 180 degrees. And now we don't see our bottom Saber. In order to fix that, we need to select both Sabers and set the mode to screen. And you can, now we can even see our text. You can either leave it visible or completely hide it. I prefer to hide it because that looks better in my opinion. But you can do yours of course. So this is a quite heavy effect. So while previewing you might want to lower the resolution to be able to preview it actually. And once you're happy with what you have. You can uh, select everything. Right click and press pre-compose. And let's name this text just to be organized. Click OK. Let's quickly add a background. So right click new solid. Let's name it as BG and make sure it's black. Click OK and place it under our text layer. Let's create a reflection. Select the text layer, press Ctrl D to duplicate this. Name the bottom layer reflection to stay organized. That's all I like to do. And right click, go to transform and flip vertical. At the moment, we cannot see our reflection layer. In order to fix that, we need to set the text mode to screen and once we do that our reflection is visible select your reflection now and drag it to the bottom and place it accordingly so it looks like a reflection okay there is no really a right way to do this just see for yourself so i'll select the reflection layer press t for opacity and set opacity to 70 percent so it looks more like a reflection now we need a floor that will be reflecting our bottom layer I've been using this fractal noise pattern a lot as my floor, so you could do that as well. So drag it to the timeline and let's turn this into a 3D layer by clicking here. Okay, then go ahead and select the rotation tool or click W for a shortcut. Rotate the floor accordingly, then select the selection tool and drag the Z axis down and kind of align the floor. So it's under our main text layer and covers the reflection layer only. Let's add a few effects to our floor layer. Go to effects and presets, search for curves and apply this to the floor. And bring this down to kind of darken the floor. And the next effect we'll be adding is motion tile. Search for the motion tile and apply this to the floor layer. Make sure to check mirror edges for output width. Set it to 200 for output height, set it to 400. And then adjust the floor accordingly again. So it's covering the reflection layer and not so much touching the uh, main text layer. Something like this would do it. Once you've adjusted the placement, go ahead, right click the floor, press pre compose. Make sure to check movable attributes and let's name this floor. Click OK. And then we can hide our floor layer. Next, uh, right click a uh, new adjustment layer. Let's name this compound. This will make sense in just a bit. Place the compound adjustment layer in between the text and reflection layer. Like that. I go to effects and presets. Search for compound blur. 
of course apply this to the compound adjustment layer and we can see that we are getting some distortions already the reflection so set blur layer to our floor and now you can see that we're getting the texture of our floor or fractal noise texture from our floor so that's nice of course here you can play around with the maximum blur so the higher you go the more texture you see from our like original floor layer you can also invert blur to get a different kind of reflection so you usually set it to 180 uh i feel like that, that looks more like re realistic the next cool effect we could add to our compound layer is c glass so search for cc glass and apply this to the compound adjustment layer then go to surface and set a bump map to floor all right decrease the softness to zero set displacement to 20 and height to 10 and go to light and set light intensity something high like 200 you can see that it, we're getting nice lighting on our floor now and go to shading decrease specular to zero and roughness to the minimum we can also select our reflection layer go to effects and preset search for fast box blur and apply this to the reflection layer and here set blur radius to say 10 but that kind of blurs it out a lot so increase the iterations to one set iterations to one but you know set blur radius to six that should look good and give it a nice realistic reflection to blur it out a bit we can quickly preview what we have and once we're happy with what we have we can select everything right click pre-compose make sure removal attribute is selected let's name this all and press ok in this section we'll be adding a bunch of adjustment layers and effects to the scenes let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll be labeling every adjustment layer to stay organized so it's easier for us to adjust stuff in future okay so get used to that from the beginning let's name this one glow go to effects and presets and search for the effect called directional blur apply this to the glow adjustment layer increase blur length to 300 Oh, it's actually good to 400 and uh, set direction to 90 degrees all right set the mode of this adjustment layer to lighten all right then go to press t for opacity and set opacity to 50 percent so that should give our scene like nice streaks of light kind of thing so should make it look better let's create another adjustment layer they name this one noise i always like to add noise to this kind of work specifically so let's search for noise and apply the noise to the noise adjustment layer set amount to 12 and then check use color noise so that should give our scene like a more depth and overall improve the way how it looks next adjustment layer right click new adjustment layer now let's name this adjustment layer curves we'll be adding curves yes another curves effect to create that s curve that gives our scene a touch of contrast so show overall improve the quality of the colors next adjustment layer let's name this gradient we will be adding a gradient ramp effect to this so search for it in effects and presets then apply it to the gradient adjustment layer. set ramp shape to radial ramp click swap colors and bring the start of ramp to the corner i'm used to the using left corner you can use right corner if you like set the mode to lighten and now we need to change the color of that white what i like to do is i like to grab the color that kind of matches uh the scene so then kind of darken it a lot a lot so by doing that we could you can see though we're getting a nice background shading so that should improve and give them a sense of depth to our scene okay also set wrap scatter to 50 percent next adjustment layer will be a sharpness adjustment layer so let's call this unsharp and bring it under our gradient adjustment layer then go to effects and presets to search for unsharp mask and add it to the adjustment layer and you'll see what this does so uh this sharpens up the uh the outlines of our uh, text or a, like a paths so set amount 75 percent set radius to 25 and threshold to 20 and you can see what this effect does it kind of like makes it more punchy our outlines of our text so that's kind of nice 
So far, I'd say that this is it, and uh, we could add another adjust layer that's completely optional. But I do like using this a lot, so let's name this Optics. I'll be using the effect uh, Optics Compensation. Make sure to bring the Optics Adjustment Layer under our Gradient Layer as well. So add Optics Compensation. Here, check a Reverse Lens Distortion and play around with the field of view. So keep increasing it until you get something that you actually like. So something like 70, say, 75 should look all right. And yeah, this is a cool effect. Uh, but of course this wouldn't apply to every single uh, scene let's say you can also play around with a view center like if you want your stretchiness to be on top or not the bottom that's you know completely possible okay play around with it on your own so uh, yeah there is no really much more to this uh, uh, you will let's preview what we have so far as I said this is a quite a heavy effect so I want to lower the resolution while previewing and yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial and if you found it useful, uh, feel free to give it a like. That will help me out a lot. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because I post a lot of useful tutorials like this weekly. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.